Sounds good. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Nick Vidal. Uh, I work for Anarx. I'm the community manager of this open source project. I also work with Profian. And we're going to be talking about bootstrapping a community using mentorship. And uh, this is a brief uh, summary of what we will be covering. So I'll give a brief introduction to confidential computing, about Anarx, how it works. I'll talk about uh, the mentorship programs and initiatives that exist. Uh, and I'll uh, highlight each way that our mentees have helped our community around documentation, tutorials, codes, events. Also, we have a hack challenge that we created. And uh, finally, we're going to have a conclusion. And after that, we're going to run a live demo. Let's see if that works. Oh, I need uh, internet for that. So let's, let's see. So let's start with a brief introduction. What's Anarx? So Anarx is an open source project. We're part of the Confidential Computing Consortium from the Linux Foundation. And Confidential Computing uh, is a very new area. Uh, it's an emerging area with a, a very new community. Before explaining what's confidential computing, uh, let's start explaining what are the three states of data protection. So uh, we can protect data at rest, in transit, and in use. Confidential computing is about protecting data in use. This is a, a whole new area that it's emerging. So what's protecting data at rest? If, you're, if you have a, a laptop and you encrypt your hard drive, that's encrypting data, uh, protecting data at rest. If your laptop gets lost, your data is protected because uh, whoever stole your laptop, he can scan the whole uh, hard drive uh, and he'll not be able to make sense of the data. And the same is valid for the clouds. So if you upload uh, uh, a document in the clouds and that gets saved, uh, that storage, if it's encrypted, again, if somebody gets access to that server and he or she tries to uh, see that data, if it's encrypted, it's protected. Uh, we also have protection in transits. And that's when you open a browser, you enter HTTPS, and you try to access uh, a website. Uh, HTTPS is about uh, protecting the flow of this data between your browser and the server. Also, when you're using instant messaging or uh, any type of application that has end-to-end -end encryption, that data that it's going back and forth is encrypted. Nobody in the middle who has access to this data will be able to, to see that data. And this is really important. So protection at rest uh, is something that a lot of people use. It's very common in the clouds, of course. In transit, uh, back in, in a, a long time ago, uh, only e-commerce websites used HTTPS. But with, with campaigns like Let's Encrypt, uh, people really started using HTTPS by default. Uh, and this is really important. It really made uh, the web more safe, more secure. And we hope to have the same impacts uh, with confidential computing, protecting data in use. If people could default to that, that would be really great. So uh, confidential computing uh, protects data in use by performing a computation in a hardware-based trusted execution environment, a TE. Uh, there are four ways that we can uh, actually uh, protect this data, so the, conf uh, the data and the codes. So confidentiality of the data, integrity of the data, uh, integrity of the codes, and also confidentiality of the codes while this is not a requirement for confidential computing, Anarx does provide this. Um, and uh, it's interesting. Uh, you can think about the, there's, there's a phrase that we, we use at Anarx, no picking and no tweaking. That's how you can remember this. So no picking means protecting the confidentiality. You can't peek into the data. 
and no tweaking, you can't mess up with the data or the codes, of course. So uh, what are the uses for confidential computing? There are a lot of sectors that have a lot of sensitive data. They have not been able to use the cloud so far because uh, these sectors are very much regulated. And uh, so we have like banking and finance, healthcare, government, public sector, customer data, telecommunications. These sectors have very sensitive data. How can they take advantage of the clouds? Uh, if uh, the server gets hacked, we hear this all the time uh, on the news, uh, and the data gets leaked. This is really problematic. And these are the main sectors where confidential computing plays, could play a really important role. So we brought in uh, some mantis who had no idea what was confidential computing. This is very new. And we, uh, in just a few months, they were able to learn a bit more about anarchs, about confidential computing, and technologies that we use to achieve this. And this was really important. So uh, we decided to create a, a fellowship program, uh, a, a mentorship program, uh, as, not just as part of Anarx, but as part of the Confidential Computing Consortium from the Linux Foundation. So it, it was not just about our own projects. The, Lin the Confidential Computing Consortium has six projects uh, currently. One of them is Anarx. And we wanted to have other uh, projects to join us in this mentorship program. Uh, right now, we're participating together with Vera Cruz, which is another uh, uh, project part of the CCC. And uh, when creating a mentorship program, uh, it's very challenging. Uh, I don't recommend creating one from zero. There are several initiatives that already exist, and you can take advantage of those. So we have LFX mentorship from the Linux Foundation. Uh, it works really great. We have a lot of interest there, people interested in learning about confidential computing. We have Google Summer of Codes as well. Uh, this is a program uh, from Google to promote uh, new uh, members to learn about open source. And we have Outreach, which is a fantastic program from the Software Freedom Conservancy. And they, we've been getting a lot of very, uh, very good individuals uh, it's a diversity initiative, so people from uh, very different backgrounds, but they've been learning, and it was, it was uh, a really great experience for them, for them to learn and to contribute to our projects. So one of the ways that our mentors have been helping us is ar around documentation. Uh, documentation is really important for, an, uh, especially for a very early community, because that's how they will learn, and that's how they will share it with others. So uh, very early on, uh, our community has helped to create a, a documentation. And uh, I, I want to go back a, a bit around confidential computing and how that works. So we have several CPUs that provide confidential computing. Uh, we have Intel, AMD, ARM. And what's so challenging about this is that every single one of those CPUs, they have a way to implement confidential computing. And it's completely different. And Anarx provides a thin layer that uh, abstracts this complexity and allows you to uh, take advantage of computational computing. And we use something called WebAssembly for that. Um, most of you probably have heard of WebAssembly uh, on the web. But WebAssembly also works in the clouds. So you can use whatever. Uh, programming language you're familiar with, uh, C, C++, Rust, Go, uh, and use WebAssembly to compile that to uh, 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 an architecture uh, like Intel or AMD. And this, this is totally transparent, and it works really well. One of the challenges is that WebAssembly is also very new. So confidential computing is very new. WebAssembly uh, for the clouds is also very new. The support uh, for these different languages uh, is not on par yet. It's uh, in progress. So our Mantis really played an important role in doing some research around each one of those different languages and seeing how that works with WebAssembly. So, each, uh, so we have um, 
in our WebAssembly guide, we have about 13 languages. And so imagine having to do a research for each language and see how that works, uh, how WebAssembly works for each language. And so uh, our uh, in interns and mentees, they went around, they researched about this for each language. Uh, they created tutorials for each one and they tested. If it was too complicated, they asked help one from each other. And so this was really important for us. Uh, we, this, uh, we also created several tutorials and we created a community around this called Wasm Builders. And so Wasm Builders is made up by several uh, organizations and several companies. We have Anarchs uh, or open source projects. Uh, we, we have a few companies here who have joined, who have helped to grow uh, this community. And the Anarchs projects, the Anarchs interns, have published over 100 tutorials at Wesson Builders. And over 1,000 people are on this community learning about WebAssembly and how uh, the, the several languages like Go, for example, how to make Go work with WebAssembly and WASI. So this is really exciting. Um, we started this community from scratch, and now we have a very healthy community there. And thanks to, to our mentees and other people who have, who have published as well uh, tutorials here. Uh, our mentees have also helped to build demos and helped with codes. So Anarx is quite interesting because our first release was just a few months ago, uh, maybe six or seven months ago. And every time it's changing. We add a new feature, sometimes it breaks. Uh, and imagine you uh, as a mentee working with this software. Uh, every, very new, every time changing, it's not production ready, and learning about this and all the new features. So, and this was really important for us. So uh, two of our uh, mentees, they helped us with implementing a TCP echo server when we first provided support for networking. And what's interesting is that we have a very senior developer in our, in our core team, uh, Harold. Uh, he actually implemented the TCP echo server and our mentees, they tested this to see how it works. And they found uh, that, uh, I wouldn't say it's a bug, but it was uh, an assumption from, our, uh, from Harold that it didn't quite work. An environment, uh, it was a bit different. And so this was really interesting to see junior developers working together with someone very senior and they identified a problem and they work together to uh, develop something better. So uh, mentees are really fantastic for helping uh, 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 to break down assumptions, right? That we as senior developers may have. And this is especially true for security. Uh, it's true for software communities in general and open source communities in general, but especially around security open source projects because uh, it's all about the assumptions that we have. And when we bring a, a, a diverse group together to analyze our codes, they can find these vulnerabilities that we haven't thought about before. Uh, we all ha also had a, a mentee, who, uh, she was very passionate about machine learning and about learning, uh, learning Rust. And so she built a demo around that. And another mentee that we had, uh, she was very much into cybersecurity. She helped to create a demo, a fantastic demo here. You can see the illustration around zero knowledge proof. This is a way uh, for you to, um, you kind of verify something without reveal, revealing uh, any information. This is very much used uh, in cryptography. And she built a very beautiful demo around that. Um, our mentors have also participated in events. So um, our, our founders, they present at a lot of conferences, uh, but they haven't presented yet in Africa and Asia. And since our, our mentees were from these regions, they helped us to reach those regions and to promote confidential computing and to promote Anarx there. So it was really interesting that we, uh, we were at Open Source Festival in Africa, 
FOSS Asia, which is one of the largest open source conferences uh, in Asia. Uh, also, uh, it was nice that to see our mentees presenting at the Open Confidential Computing uh, Conference. This is the largest conference around confidential computing. And they were very junior, but at the same time, they were sharing the stage with the CDO of uh, Microsoft Azure. And to see this contrast, very junior developers presenting side by side uh, with uh, like the CDO of Azure, that's just fantastic. Also, one of her mentees uh, recently, she was accepted. Uh, so Shraddha, who built the zero knowledge proof demo, her work was accepted at the open source in finance forum. This is a conference we were never able to participate in, and we're working out the details uh, of how she could travel. This, this is going to be an in-person event, and how she could travel uh, to this conference to participate. And so uh, we have to work with the mentees. Uh, when we're speaking, everybody gets nervous, so we have to work with them on, on building this confidence in giving talks, and this is really great to see their growth. So uh, this is one of the, uh, uh, it's nice because Anarx is, uh, our logo is a shield. And every release that we have, uh, it's around castles and forts. So that's our theme. So she created uh, uh, this theme as well uh, for her presentations. So we have here the dragons, like the, the bad guys trying to break your, your data, right? And yes. Very nice. They have also helped us to create something that we, we call a hack challenge. And th this was pretty exciting. Um, I'm going to share a story, Nathaniel, with you. So Nathaniel is one of the founders of Anarx. Uh, he presented this demo just a month ago in Valencia at Cubicon. And um, Harold and Richard, which are the most senior developers, they built a, a framework, and I built uh, this application on top of that. And I'm also new to, to Rust, and I'm learning Rust. So I was having some issues, especially with the borrow checker. Anybody who knows Rust knows about the borrow checker. You're always fighting constantly uh, with, with, with the borrow checker. And I had one really, uh, really hard time uh, with one special thing, and I couldn't solve it. And so what happened is that after two days trying to solve this, I reached out to one of our community members, uh, Mayank, who is more knowledgeable about Rust. And so he helped me, and he said, hey, this is how you can do this. You have to use ref cell, uh, if I recall correctly, uh, to pass this, this data. Uh, as a parameter. So mentorship has been uh, a two-way street. It's not just you as a mentor teaching your mentees, but also you learning from your mentees. And each one of those mentees working together uh, as peers and learning from each other, creating tutorials, creating videos, creating demos, and uh, sharing knowledge. So this is what's so special and, and so nice about a mentorship program. So crypto is a, a Wordle clone. So this is everyone's favorite uh, word guessing game. And uh, what we did is we created a, a version where you can guess, uh, just like Wordle, you can guess one secret word. There's a multiplayer version as well, where you try to guess other people's words. And there's a third way of playing this. So we are going to give you root access to the server and look at all the uh, data, uh, all the data, all the words that are being sent to the server. But since we're using confidential computing, and since all the data is encrypted, you wouldn't be able to see that. So the challenge is, if you can break into that, if you can break uh, anarchs, if you can find an exploit and see those secret words, then you win the hack challenge. So we're going to play this game uh, right after uh, the presentation, and I think it will be fun. It was interesting because we got together with uh, uh, everyone of our mentees to promote this. So this design for the hack challenge was created by 
uh, one of our mentees as well. Uh, actually, several, there were several proposals, and we selected one of them. So everyone was working together. Uh, in fact, uh, I'll be presenting, uh, there's a large hack conference. In, I'm from Brazil, so there's a large hack, uh, hack conference happening uh, three weeks from now. And uh, the person, the mentee who created this design, uh, Anna, she will also be there. And she will be presenting together this. So this is really great when we can bring everyone together. This will be an in-person conference. So it will be nice for her to participate there as well. Uh, so uh, what are some conclusions that we can uh, take from this? Um, the goal of Anarx and Mike and Nathaniel, since the very beginning, they wanted to make confidential computing accessible. Confidential computing is really complex. You have to know about cryptography. You have to know about attestation. Uh, for each CPU, you have a, a way of implementing this. It's really, really complex. And their goal was always, how can we make this accessible? How can we, uh, even junior developers, can uh, pick this up and create applications that use confidential computing. So it was really important for us to have this mentorship program because the, the mentees help us validate this. Uh, and they're constantly helping us. We have these assumptions of what it's easy, what's accessible. And if they can, if the junior developers can develop this, hopefully the senior developers can also develop this, right? And this is really important. Um, the mentees have really made a big impact in our community. They have helped us with documentation, with tutorials, codes, testing, building demos, helping us with events, virtual events, and right now, uh, real in-person events as well, with the Hack Challenge. So uh, they have really played a, an important role for our, our very small and, and growing community. And hopefully, we have also helped them, uh, helped them in their careers, not just professionally, uh, to help them grow professionally, but also uh, personally, uh, as a person, learn about open source and collaboration. And they can say, hey, I was part of an emerging, uh, emerging technology, confidential computing, actually two, and WebAssembly. So to be part of this, this is kind of like Kubernetes five years ago. We're, uh, we're there in the, in, the, in the moment that this is starting. And to have uh, those mentees working together with us and building this community from the start, I think it's a really special moment. And so I would like to acknowledge uh, our mentees who have helped us uh, in, this, uh, in growing our community. Uh, and invite you to join our community. So that's our website, anarchs.dev. If you want to visit our GitHub page as well, if you want to give us a star, that would be great. You can join our chats. And we have a fellowship guide. Uh, this is under Creative Commons. If you want to implement something similar in your open source community, please feel free to use uh, this uh, as well. And let's see how much time we have. Let's see if we can play a game. So we're actually going to be playing crypto here. And so I need everyone's help right now. If you can get your phone, I hope Wi-Fi is working. Please get your phone here. And uh, let me show you the URL. Uh, Crypto.dev if you can join this. I hope it's working. Sometimes, or this is not production waiting. Live demos are always challenging, but let's see if it works. So I'll give you a brief ex explanation of how this works. So there are two ways to play, uh, three ways to play this, right? So one way, it's a one player, is just like Wordle. And we're going to do the multiplayer version. And here are the colors to help you. You're going to guess uh, a five-letter words. 
and you can guess uh, as many words as you want. Uh, even if you fill out all the, all the uh, I believe there's six entries, you can start over, no problem. Uh, and we also have different colors. So the blue color is when you have a letter in the right spots for any words that have been sent. Purple means that you got a word correct that somebody else guessed. And red means that you guessed a word that was already a match before. Or it, so red is not valid. You want the purple ones. You want to guess other people's words, OK? The third way is the hack challenge that I explained before. So uh, let's try to play this game. But I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you with this. It's very challenging for you to think about those five letter words. Some of you have more practice on this because you, you've been playing Wordle for a long time. But I'm going to show you some slides. And this will give you some hints of wor what words you can select. Uh, don't start from the beginning. You can start from the middle of the slides or the ends. Let's give it a try. Let's see if that works, OK? So let me go back here to the slides. And I'll just read a summary of the whole session. And each slide will have those words, those five-letter words. So let's give it a try. Let's see who can type really fast. Whoops. OK. You see, slides is a five-letter word. So you have to type this as fast as possible. If you get it read, it means somebody else already guessed that. There was already a match. So uh, let's start. Each slide will contain hints and clues. Guess first the words that match to win. Be alert, be quick, and be smart, and sharp. Lucky ones with a high score will win a prize. Everybody got this? Go ahead, try type those words as fast as possible. If there's an issue with the website, give a refresh. You have to enter your Twitter handle so we can identify and see who's, uh, who's guessing those words. And all those words are being sent uh, to the server. It's running on top of Anarx. And when there's a match, you get a purple one, OK? Next slide. Our mentorship program helps young women and all folks from diverse backgrounds to learn about open source, Linux, and the cloud, to solve any issue on GitHub, to write their first Hello World in Rust, and to build demos with WebAssembly, which just feels like magic. So we have a lot of five-letter words here. Give it a try. Probably you're going to get a lot of reds because people are guessing all the time. But find your best strategy. Next up, we help mentees to create videos, to tell a story, to give talks at events, and to teach their peers in a virtual cycle. Our values are worth fighting for. We believe in providing trust. The clouds can be quite scary. Hosts can get phones. In an ideal world, what gets shared is a choice. The rest stays private. Chips from Intel, AMD, ARM offer confidential computing. Anarx provides a thin layer that abstracts all the complexities to achieve the next level in cybersecurity. Please join the Anarx community. We are a friendly bunch. Check our GitHub, Twitter, and LinkedIn pages, and give us stars and likes. Thank you, 
and keep Austin, Texas weird. All right, so let's see. I hope it works. So let's go back here. Let's see if it works. All right, wow, this is a lot. So these were the matches. Every one of these words was a match. Uh, so the winner was oh, no. Wait, 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 wait. I have to twice because of capitalization. Oh, yeah. We I can. Probably shouldn't win given I <laughs> yes. So, <laughs> so. Uh, who, who is this? Who is this? Who is no? Raise your hand, please. Oh, so maybe it was you. Yeah. <laughs> but but who guess who guess all those words here? Twenty five points. Oh, that that explains. Yeah, I, I see it. So you so. I see it. You, you, I see it. You didn't put your handle because you wanted to keep the, your, your data private, right? You don't want to share your, your Twitter handle. Oh, I see. Oh, and Matt, you won again. You, yeah, you're fantastic. So you got 11 points, and it's, it's tied with... Uh, so Mike what, Mike, what happened here? So you're having 11 points here, you have, you have two points here. Well, yeah. Okay. I guess, I guess we have a tie here. Uh, so I hope you had fun. Uh, this, was able, this was possible because of our mentees. They were able, able to help us to implement this. We have some t-shirts for the winners. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing people will fight to see who are the winners. But anyways, our mentorship program has been really helpful. And I would like to thank our mentees. I would like to thank Mike and Nathaniel for supporting us uh, uh, in this uh, initiative. And thank you, everyone, for, for playing and having fun. All right. <laughs> do we have time for any questions? So I, I, I do think we have some time. Uh, if anybody ha wants to ask about mentorship, also about anarchs and confidential computing, Please feel feel free to do so. And yes. Go ahead, please. So I see how you know you talk to us about kind of where your your mentee mm -hmm. came from. Can you talk about how um, the recruitment process for mentors works in the confidential mm -hmm. Yes, that's a very good question. So the question is, uh, she said that. She, saw, she sees how we were able to find mentees, right? But how is the mentor uh, selection process? So for Anarchs, we have a, a very small uh, team, actually, of developers. And uh, m mentoring requires uh, some time, right? Uh, some dedication. And it's very challenging. Uh, so for us, uh, uh, I've been acting as a mentor, but we have also, um, we talked with our mentees and they always approach other members uh, of the community, the core team, to ask any questions. So you could see the collaboration between uh, uh, Deepan Shu, for example, uh, while with Harold, which is the more, most senior developer. Um, this is a challenge we should uh, embrace more, right? We should work together with our, our core team and uh, help them to work together with uh, the mentees. We also have another project, Veracruz, and they have made, a, made available actually three mentors for their uh, open source projects. The, um, we are also trying to find mentees, uh, sorry, mentors from other communities uh, not just from anarchs. So if anybody is available and wants to contribute and become a mentor, you don't have to know about confidential computing or anarchs. This is actually a nice opportunity for you to learn. But if you want to become a mentor to help with documentation or even preparing for a, an event or a conference, uh, this is a, a nice way to get together uh, in this community. But that's a very good question. This is something that we have to work on. Yeah. 
uh, any other questions? So we have about five minutes. I hope you enjoyed the game. It was, it was really fun. I was, uh, sometimes it did crash. This is very experimental. This was uh, implemented in Rust and compiled to WebAssembly and it's running on top of Anarx. Uh, and we want to demonstrate confidential computing. So all, the, all this data here, uh, when there's a match, uh, we, made, we review this information to everyone and we made it public, right? But all, you can imagine this, all these secret words, uh, they're kept in memory and uh, they're only revealed when there's a match. But if there's not a match, this data should remain private. So we wanted to create a, a fun game. Uh, so Word was like the most famous uh, uh, word guessing game. And yeah, I hope you enjoy. Continue playing. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.